So, we begin again after the tea break and uh, now this is going to be a, a discussion session. I will take up any questions which come up on any topics discussed so far. So, uh, I am going to uh, talk to JNTU Hyderabad. So, over to you uh, JNTU. Good afternoon sir. The question is, uh, in case of the steam tables or uh, Mollier chart, beyond what uh, region can we treat uh, steam as ideal gas? My recommendation is uh, do not treat steam ever. This is a very common mistake I do and I uh, uh, inculcate the habit of not treating steam as an ideal gas on my student by uh, giving a very severe penalty. For example, while evaluating a quiz, if I see that he is using P V equal to R T, he or she is using P V equal to R T for steam, simply stop there. 0 for that question, no questions beyond that are evaluated, period. Over to you. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. I am talking to teachers, so such things are okay. SVNIT Surat, over to you. Uh, question number 3, part B. What will be the nature of HS diagram? Over to you. Uh, I suppose you are talking of question 3 in the combined laws uh, this thing, over to you. Yes sir, over. Okay, so what is uh, given to us, let us see, let us uh, look at the problem, C L 3, uh, maximum useful power output from an adiabatic steam turbine, inlet is given, exit pressure is given and flow rate is 5 kg per second, also determine the exit state. Okay. So, uh, this is we want maximum useful power from an adiabatic steam turbine, it is an open system. So, the word useful is not of much uh, uh, importance here, because it is a steady state open system problem. And since it is adiabatic, the maximum power will occur when it is adiabatic and reversible that is isentropic. So, the exit state will be at a pressure of 1 bar and uh, entropy the same thing as that of the inlet state. And then you can determine the maximum power. Now, rework the problem if the steam loses 40 kilo joule per kg of heat to the atmosphere which is at 300 k what is the exit state in this case. Okay. Now, uh, look at it, we have a steam turbine, Uh, apart from the pressures, the state I and the pressure at E, P E is given, state I is completely specified, Q naught is specified, Q dot naught is given as it loses 40 kilo joule per kilogram of heat. So, this is 40 kilo joule per kilogram with a negative sign into M dot, that is uh, the way it is and environment is at 300 k. So, we want the maximum power in this case, that means the situation where S dot P is 0. So, uh, the first law would be uh, Q dot naught minus W dot S, in this case W dot S max 
will be equal to m dot into h i minus h e. This h e is to be determined, but in this equation we know everything, but we do not know w dot s max and we do not know h e. So, first law by itself is not of use to us. Uh, the second law would be q dot naught by t naught plus uh, sorry this s dot p will be equal to m dot into s i minus a c. s dot p is 0. So, this gives us a handle on um, s e then P e and S e give us the uh, um, exit state, that exit state because q dot naught is given, t naught is given. So, exit state uh, we get S e from here, that exit state we substitute here and get w dot S max. Now, uh, uh, depending on the sign of q dot naught, since q dot naught is negative, uh, your uh, uh, S e will be, wait, 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 have I written it as correctly or should it be S e minus S i? I made a mistake here in both the equations. This should be H e minus H i and this should be S e minus S i. So, S e is to be calculated, q dot is negative, that will give you S e less than S i. and the uh, uh, HS diagram will look like this. Inlet state, inlet pressure, exit pressure and uh, this is the isentropic exit state when there is no q dot. Our exit state because there is a heat loss will turn out to be somewhere here. This is exit state for uh, not okay, reversible. turbine with q dot not less than 0. So, the process will look something like this. You need not show it by a dotted line, you are justified in showing it by a continuous line because it will be a reversible process, but the fact is we do not really know what the detail is inside. So, we actually know only i and e. So, only from that point of view, it is not because it is not a quasi static process, it is a quasi static process, but we do not know the detail. You may as well join it by a straight line, but remember that that straight line does not mean anything. We should not read off a point in between and do any computations based on it. Over to you. Over and out, sir. Uh, College of Engineering, Pune, over to you. Hello sir, my question is, is it possible to attain 0 Kelvin temperature? Simple answer to this is no and I, before you ask a supplementary is why, the answer is uh, look at it like this. If I have a system at 0 K, that means suppose I am, assume I have created a system at 0 K then all that I will do is run a reversible 2 T heat engine or actually a any heat engine, uh, say take a reversible 2 T heat engine, argument is simpler, uh, between some temperature and uh, that system at 0 K. It can be however small, it can take uh, picowatts of heat from the temperature, system at temperature T naught 
it may re, uh, reject picowatts of heat to the system which is at 0 K. What will be its uh, uh, efficiency? Its efficiency is 100 percent that violates the Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Because the, if you say Kelvin statement, Kelvin Planck statement of the second law, it is a very strong statement. He said that look, you cannot have a heat engine which only absorbs heat and converts it completely into work. If I have a system at 0 K, I am straight away able to set up a uh, an engine with a 100 percent efficiency. With uh, that means, which absorbs it from say a system at uh, 20 k, 30 k or 300 k and converts it completely into work. Since we know that Kelvin Planck statement is a, is a good statement, we have not found out a single violation. So, that means, our basic assumption that we can have a system at uh, 0 Kelvin that itself is not correct. Over to you. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, JNTU Hyderabad, over to you. Hello, sir. Would you please throw some light on Ansager relations, which are very important for us, sir? Over to you, sir. Okay. You are talking of the Ansager relations, better known as the uh, Ansager reciprocal relations. Okay. Uh, number one is Ansager relations are uh, not in our domain of thermodynamics, they are in the uh, domain of non-equilibrium thermodynamics or uh, uh, modeling or thermodynamics of transport processes okay. and it talks of uh, energy fluxes of different kinds, particularly the Ansager relationship between the mass diffusion and heat transfer and vice versa are uh, very well known. But we will not look at them uh, because that will involve quite some time. Okay. Uh, and uh, remember now that you are talking about it, uh, many textbooks have a small discussion about whether the uh, nomenclature thermodynamics is the proper nomenclature for us because we lay, we uh, put so much emphasis on equilibrium, which in mechanics etcetera would mean that we are in the domain of something equivalent to the statics part of mechanics rather than the dynamics part of mechanics. So, many people say that uh, what we teach should really be called thermostatics rather than thermodynamics. And there are books uh, on uh, what we call thermodynamics, but they their uh, title is thermostatics. If we accept that, then thermostatics will uh, be our thermodynamics. Thermodynamics would be what follows that is fluid mechanics, where there is non equilibrium and that is uh, counteracted by momentum transfer and uh, heat transfer, where there is thermal non equilibrium temperature variations and that is attempted to be compensated by heat transfer. Okay. And out there, even now when you study uh, heat transfer and mass diffusion, you study them independently and when you study them independently, uh, Onsager's reciprocal relations need not be invoked. But when you look at uh, the thermo diffusion effect and diffuso, diffuso thermal effect, that is the uh, sorate effect and the I forget the other uh, effect, Dufour effect. Uh, when you study those things uh, in detail, then you will have to worry about Ansager's reciprocal relations. Over to you. Uh, government College, Salem, over to you. Good evening, sir. Sir, uh, some uh, doubts in the notations which you are often using, sir. Identically equal for uh, defining many of the laws, whether uh, you are simultaneously, you are not defining uh, the converse of uh, first, second, third uh, thermodynamic uh, per laws. Thereby we can say identically equal, otherwise equal only, sir. Insisting very much on identically equal sign, 
and again uh, absolute uh, properties some characteristics state functions the same name for uh, uh, for uh, uh, and again uh, uh, you are using delta for small increment uh, as well as uh, for uh, total quantity also for example uh, delta s12 equal to integral 1 to 2 like that probably uh, at the same time at some other uh, place you are using delta for increment sir uh, is that uh, internationally accepted notation uh, some uh, confusion about it sir can you please explain over to you sir uh, your question is nice what i am doing is my notation sometimes created on the spur of the moment but i have this ability uh, maybe just because some of my teachers used it not necessarily teachers of thermodynamics when i say uh, a equivalent to b for this me this means a is defined as b okay it is not the equivalence relationship which you come across in mathematics and logic uh we have a number of such things in thermodynamics for example you know we write ta equals tb if you look at it mathematically uh, it means the numerical value of temperature of system a equals the numerical value of temperature of system b uh, provided both are on the same scale of temperature in thermodynamics this only means that ta and tb are isothermal states and this is equivalent to saying that if the two systems in states a and b respectively are brought in thermal contact with each other across a diathermic wall there will be no heat transfer then the other one is about d and delta uh, i agree that uh, sometimes i write d sometimes i write delta uh, i write d when i am i am definite that i am going to integrate it if i am not going to integrate it i might as well use delta it doesn't matter whether you write a small d or a capital d the third one is uh, regarding uh, property uh, once you understand the characteristic of a thermodynamic property uh, whether uh, you call it property or property of state or uh, state function or a function of state all these things are equivalent okay and uh, but i agree that uh, uh, my nomenclature is not universal if i write a book then i will have to do two things i will have to very consist be very consistent with my nomenclature and number two i then i must use nomenclature which is reasonably in accordance with nomenclature used for similar things at other purposes but there are uh, nothing for example one teacher used to use a triple equal to sign triple bar equal to sign to indicate a is defined as b another teacher used to indicate it like a it a d or a delta i think he used to write like delta here but it looked almost like a triangular delta is b so sometimes a is defined as b is written like this so but i can keep away from symbolism and say a is defined as b perhaps that would be the neatest way of doing things over to you so th thank you very much sir as you are saying now if you happen to write and you are uh, to our point of understanding you are you yourself uh, a greater book and when you are writing book uh, kindly take care of these things sir thank you sir over and out sir nit trichi over to you now sir my question is with, uh, with respect to cl2 Uh, in this, the assumption given is P naught one bar T naught three hundred Kelvin. 
uh, to determine the maximum work we have to determine h not and s not so whether we have to consider a pressure uh, one bar or temperature 300 kelvin to determine the dead state so whether we have to consider these as a compressible fluid or incompressible fluid so whether we have to use p not condition or t not condition to determine the maximum work for determining h not and s not over to you sir uh, exercise cl2 uh, cl2 it's not very uh, emphatically mentioned but it says determine the maximum useful work that pen that can be obtained when the following systems undergo uh, the specific change of state and we have in the first one remember it just says 1 kg of ordinary water at uh, a given say 10 bar saturated liquid and final state is p not 1 bar t not 300 k i think you measured mentioned enthalpy now when you say that 1 kg of ordinary water we are looking here at closed systems So, W useful max, when you take a system from the initial state to the final state, the final state will be here now uh, the state 0, that is the so called dead state at P naught T naught. So, this will be E naught plus P naught V naught plus sorry minus T naught S naught minus your um, the initial state, the initial state will be uh, whatever is the given, I will just write E plus P naught V minus T naught S and uh, I will take the mass outside. So, when I take the mass outside, I will have minus M. Uh, this will be E naught which I will write as U naught because I will assume them that uh, at uh, rest plus P naught V naught minus T naught S naught minus U plus P naught V minus T naught S. Now, after having written let me take uh, say the uh, part 3. Okay. Here uh, U, V and S are properties of steam at, because it is 3, they are at 100 bar 600 degree C and u naught v naught s naught are properties of steam or whatever is the phase it is in at p naught t naught okay that is at 1 bar 300 here also properties of steam, here we know that 100 bar 600 degree C it will definitely be steam, but I think in case of 1 it is obviously water, in case of the Roman small 1. Okay. I think that should explain, once you consider it a closed system um, that issue will not come up, but if uh, I can modify that question and then I can convert it into something like this when actually uh, mm, that will be good. It is good you ask that question because I think in my next version I will have a Cl 2 A. So, I will say Cl 2 modified. Take 1 kg of 1 kg of steam. steady state and 
change of state from the given state to to p naught v naught p naught t naught in which case i will write that w dot the power obtained max will be equal to minus uh, m dot i forgot to write that uh, h not minus t not s not minus h minus t not s and in case of to illustrate this completely in case of 3 uh, h s will be at uh, what was the data given 100 bar 600 degrees C and H naught S naught will be the properties at one actually I should write P naught equal to 1 bar and T naught equal to uh, what was that 300 K. I think that should explain you if you consider closed system as you showed it here as we showed it here, uh, there is no place for H in here, okay. whereas if you consider it as open system as I consider it in this modified uh, form of the uh, this thing, if I say 1 kg per second of steam, I think this at least from my page 1 kg per second was missing. Uh, then you have this H naught coming into place, H naught and H. And remember this, the I forgot to even close this bracket, let me close it now. I think now it is complete. So, I hope you understand this, over to you. One more question. Uh, sir, this is regarding the availability and exergy analysis of thermal systems, sir. Uh, so, I could notice several research papers on this topic. So, how this kind of analysis will be useful for uh, uh, working engineers or practicing engineers, especially for designing and testing of thermal systems? Over to you, sir. Uh, I do not really know. I have seen a number of papers. Actually, my exposure to the in thermal engineering is restricted to uh, mainly thermal power plants boilers, furnaces, turbines, maybe to some extent gas turbines, but mainly steam turbines and heat exchangers of various kind. My exposure to refrigeration, cryogenic and uh, air conditioning industry is uh, that way comparatively uh, very, very poor. But in whatever um, uh, industry exposure I have, either when I was working there or through my consultation work. Uh, I, I have not come across any situation where exergy's analysis is used at the design stage. It is used just as a curiosity after the design is over, uh, just to find out uh, in a big power plant where are the uh, causes of improvement. Because see, although economics plays a role, the economics is driven by technology. So, one has to see which is the um, component which is producing the maximum amount of entropy or the one which is leading to the maximum amount of lost work. And at least from a technical point of view, it would make uh, a significant contribution if that thing is reduced. Once you zero in on a few such components, then uh, we look at the alternatives, the better way of doing things and reducing the uh, S dot P, the entropy production rate. And then finally, what is implemented and how is implemented and to what extent we reduce S dot P comes out of uh, economy. So, finally, it is a techno economic decision. Maybe things are different in the uh, refrigeration and air conditioning industry because uh, many authors I find are uh, those who publish papers 
are involved with uh, liquefaction of gases or cryo processing or things like that. So, maybe out there they have uh, uh, direct contribution from the availability and exergy analysis to their work. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Over and out. NIT Trichy tells me that uh, the condition which I was talking as 100 bar 600 degree C is actually 10 bar 600 degree C. So, okay, whatever I correct myself, this is not 100 bar 600 degree C, this is actually 10 bar 600 degree C and that means I need to correct it on the previous page also and uh, let me put it there and I hope it gets aligned the way it was. Here also I had written 100 bar, so let me correct that 100 bar also to 10 bar. NIT Trichy, over to you. Good evening sir. Uh, practically is it possible to produce uh, steam at 0 degree Celsius? or otherwise uh, ice at 100 degree Celsius, over to you. Okay. Uh, let us look at the TS diagram in detail. We have 0 0.01 degree C exact temperature of the triple point. From here the liquid vapor line goes like this, the solid vapor line I am exaggerating goes slightly to the left and up and this is the solid vapor line. Okay. This point is the triple point and since it is point 0 0.01 degree C, if you take say 0 degree C, it will be somewhere here. So, your first question was, is it possible to have steam that is vapor at 0 degree C? The answer is yes, at low enough pressures you will have steam out here at 0 degree C you have steam, out here it is saturated steam, below, below that it is superheated steam, but that is at a very, very low uh, pressure, pressure below the triple point of water. About your question whether we can have solid at 100 degree C, uh, that is ice at 100 degree C, the answer seems to be no, because if you hunt out equilibrium situations, this uh, line, the solid liquid equilibrium line goes uh, uh, northwest. So, it is only around uh, the maximum temperature at which you will get an equilibrium ice is 0 0.01 degree C. Uh, below that you will have uh, the solid at lower and lower temperatures and above that also you will have solid at lower and lower temperatures as you increase the pressure. So, I think the answer to your first question is yes, the second question is no. Over to you. One more question sir, uh, how the parameters of deep waters C are calculated or measured uh, during the design of uh, underwater vehicles. Is it? Uh, I put the question in the Moodle also. Over to you, sir. Uh, the question is: How are the properties of deep sea water calculated? Okay. Uh, first thing, the deep sea water are calculated. If at all you do experiments in laboratory, experiments on properties of water including sea water and other liquids have been other important or interested li interesting liquids have been calculated up to few tens of uh, thousands of uh, bars. Mm. The person to do this was uh, P. W. Bridgman, a great contributor to thermodynamics including the philosophy of thermodynamics. Those who can 
should look up uh, uh, two books uh, on uh, physics by P. W. Bridgman. One is known as the nature of physical theory, a small book. Another one is the nature of uh, thermodynamics, a big book and you will find this typically in older libraries, you know old university libraries. Uh, modern libraries, uh, I do not think whether we have a copy even in our IIT libraries because this became out of print pretty early, but these are still being referred to and maybe through Google books or something like that they may be available. These two are the books which uh, one should read about uh, from Bridgman, but those who want to know about um, properties, property measurements at high temperature, his book. Uh, known as uh, the physics of high pressure is a recommended reading. But for deep sea properties all you have to do is pressurize it and measure and out there we are interested only in the subcooled liquid properties. We are generally not interested in the saturation line and uh, uh, the superheated uh, vapor zone. And if we are at it, I might mention that the liquid vapor critical point is known for steam and is known for uh, and has been measured and demonstrated for many other fluids. But I have not come across a single situation where the solid liquid critical point has been demonstrated. Maybe I am wrong, but that is a matter of curiosity um, at least for me. Uh, till a few years ago, I used to regularly uh, go on to the net and try to find out whether a solid liquid critical point has been demonstrated. Till at least about 2002 or 3, uh, I used to do that. After that, I did not get time. I got distracted by other work, um, some administrative work also. So, maybe now that you mention it and now that I have mentioned it, I have already made a note that today evening I should check that out. Maybe somebody has discovered it. Over to you. Uh, sir, this question is regarding the submission of assignment. Uh, sir, uh, what is the mode of submission? Whether it will be in hot copy or soft copy, whether we should post it in Moodle or so we should submit to the coordinator. Over to you, sir. Uh, this is about assignment. Uh, I will just make the following assignment today and uh, uh, maybe I will put it up on Moodle. So, let me just note down before I forget. Uh, one assignment is, uh, I do not want any paper submission. I want only a PDF submission and uh, whether it will be emailed to me or emailed to some address or whether it will be uploaded to the Moodle, uh, a site within Moodle or to some other site that you will be informed in a few days. because. Uh, we are also learning some aspects of Moodle which uh, we were not uh, familiar with yesterday. But one thing finally, it will be a single PDF file. So, all that you do 3, 4 parts, they will be just all combined. One participant will have to submit just one single PDF file okay. and that too by electronic means. So, either you will email it or you will upload it somewhere. The details will be known to you uh, in a few days. The PhD college wants me to write the names of the books on the whiteboard. Just a minute. The author of the book is Percy. Williams Bridgman, Nobel laureate, I think 1945 or 46, just after the Second World War. His celebrated books are Nature of Physical Theory. Uh, I spent some time early in the course talking about operational definitions and uh, there is a chapter or two on nature of physical, physical theory, uh, 
in which the idea of operational definitions is very well explained and the nature of physical theory is a is a extremely readable book you do not have to be a physicist uh, you can be a if you have taken uh, 12 standard in science you should be able to appreciate that. The second book is and the nature of physical theory is not very big maybe 100 pages of that order nature of thermodynamic and the third one is physics of high pressure. Maybe I will uh, if I have some links uh, about Bridgman I will put them on Moodle. Uh, Valchand Sangli, over to you. Sir, my question is about uh, availability of the open system. Uh, we have found the equation Ws is equal to A minus B minus C, these are the terms. Uh, uh, I am saying that the term A is Q dot 1 minus T 0 by T. That term itself indicates that it is a reversible work which is a maximum work. So, why this not called as an availability? Over to you. Uh, again uh, let me tell you that the words availability and exergy are not very properly defined and in many books you will say uh, you will see that in the cloth system the term q into 1 minus t naught by t which would be the maximum um, useful work obtainable when you you have available with you a heat interaction equal to Q from a source at temperature T and you are allowed to reject it at temperature T naught. Uh, this is the Carnot cycle work we know and that is the maximum possible work. Uh, there are books which uh, uh, say uh, or which call this the availability of uh, the heat at temperature, heat Q at temperature T and also they call the q dot into 1 minus t naught by t which comes into our steady state open system calculations uh, modeling uh, as the exergy uh, of uh, a stream of heat of value q dot at temperature t. So, what you say is being done I did not include it because you know there are many many such terms which is being used and uh, there is no limit to it over to you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Over and out. SVNIT Surat, over to you. Hello. Good evening, sir. Can we consider exergy as a specific property of pure substance? Over to you, sir. Uh, notice, I said in the morning that the availability and exergy are not pure properties. So because of the presence of P naught and T naught in them. So, you cannot consider them to be properties of the system whether pure substance or otherwise okay. and in this course we have not used the term pure substance, we have only used the terms things like simple system, rudimentary systems and complex systems. Okay. So, uh, do not be under the impression that availability and exergy are properties uh, in their own right, they are not. They are uh, functions of properties, but they are functions of the situation in which we find the environment to be. Over. One more question, sir. Uh, what are its practi practical applications of availability and exergy? Over to you, sir. No great application except that uh, we can determine the the lost work or the lost power given certain conditions and it gives us hints as to where the power is lost and uh, provides some idea not directly, but it just gives us numbers and then by looking at the numbers perhaps then we can see uh, the cause of that irreversibility. That is about it, over to you. 
ओके थैंक यू सर ओवर एंड आउट के वाघ नाशिक ओवर टू यू सर माई क्वेश्चन इज वाई हीट इट इज ए लो ग्रेड एनर्जी एंड वर्क इज ए हाई ग्रेड एनर्जी इन दिस कोर्स वी नेवर कॉल्ड हीट ए लो ग्रेड एनर्जी नॉर डिड आई कॉल वर्क अ हाई ग्रेड एनर्जी फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट लॉ पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू हीट एंड वर्क आर इक्विवेलेंट दैट इज इसेंशियली वॉट फर्स्ट लॉ सेज द सेकेंड लॉ सेज दैट हीट हैज टू बी ट्रीटेड विथ सर्टन different treatment because it is related to temperature it uh, uh, helps us define temperature levels using zeroth law and second law so the treatment of heat is different from that of work okay uh, so i don't want to define heat as low grade energy and work as high grade energy both are energies in transit of two different kinds because they are two different kinds they are treated differently okay so i can't answer your question as why heat is called low grade energy and work is called high grade energy i never called it that way. over to you uh, availability calculation for isothermal process so will you sir i think it is cl5 over to you sir cl5 you have a system consists of one kg water substance that means in some phase is compressed from 12 bar 300 degree c to 20 bar in a quasi static isothermal process so since it's talking of uh, this thing let's consider it to be a closed system and on the pv diagram it goes from 12 bar 300 degree c to 20 bar so it's in the superheated steam zone so let us say that the isotherm may look something like this so this is 300 degree c and we have an initial pressure of 12 bar a final pressure of 20 bar so this will be the initial state 1 this will be the final state 2 the process will be like this and uh, let's consider it to be a stationary system so that delta e equals delta u and um, you apply the first law q equals delta e plus w uh, delta e is delta u delta u can be calculated from knowing the initial state and the final state read off i think both the values will be available to you in the steam tables plus now w requires integral 1 to 2 pdv and that means we are uh, okay it's very clear, clear quasi static isothermal process so now for pdv i think you will have certain points in between so either you will use a trapezoidal rule or you will fit an equation over those points and integrate it but this will have to be determined by numerical integration or by a graphical method so that gives you q and this is the energy lost by the system from the initial and final state you will also get the delta s of the system so from these two states you will get delta s and delta u and as well as if you want delta v and the this will be the uh, first thing is let me see 
useful work done by the system is this minus p delta v. So, useful done work by the system is this w minus p naught delta v. Delta v is what you have obtained here, p naught is the ambient pressure and this w is this integral p d v that you have determined. Maximum useful work and lost work. Here you use the uh, availability analysis. Uh, I will write directly in terms of u now, but remember that we have to write in terms of E and then go to u by that minor assumption that it is a stationary system. Uh, u 2 plus P naught V 2 minus T naught S 2 minus u 1 plus P naught V 1 minus T naught S 1. P naught, T naught are uh, provided to us and uh, this can now be written down as simply uh, u 2 minus u 1 will be delta u as calculated in the previous slide plus delta u, P naught delta v as calculated in the previous slide minus T naught delta s as calculated in the previous slide this will be the w u max and uh, uh, the lost work, lost work will be w u max minus w and what is the cause of this lost work. If you look at the situation, go back to the previous page, you will look at the situation, the situation is the system remains at a temperature of 300 degrees C. The environment is at a temperature of uh, 30 degree C or 300 Kelvin, uh, which is about 20, almost 27 degree C, okay, very nearly. So, this heat loss which goes out of the system at 300 is absorbed by the environment which remains at uh, uh, 300, this is actually 570 K, 570 K to 300 K, it is a large temperature drop. So, it is the heat transfer across that large temperature drop which causes the entropy production and which is the uh, which leads to this lost work. I think that explains it over to you. Thank you very much sir, over and out sir. Sir, I want to get idea regarding how to find out work done in exercise number F 2.10, how to find out work done assuming steam to be one dollar all gas or to uh, a part here says compare these values with those obtained by assuming steam to be a van der Waals gas. Okay. Uh, from the steam tables, if you look at F 2.8, we have to here read off the critical conditions for water substance and obtain the van der Waals constants A and B. And before that, uh, come to uh, exercise F 2.4, where uh, A and B are determined in terms of P C, V C and T C. You will notice that uh, if we measure all three P C, V C and T C, we have three equations, but only two unknowns A and B. So, this becomes an over determined system. So, what is generally done is depending on how good the measurements are, we select two of these. In case of steam, although very good measurements of all three are available, and steam is not really a van der Waals gas. So, these equations are not really valid, but I think what may be a good idea is to uh, consider P c and T c 
and neglect that Vc equal to 3B equation. Using Pc and Tc, determine the values of A and B and then you get the Van der Waals equation for steam. Once you get A and B, so A and B for steam obtain using Pc, Tc for steam using the relations in F 2.4. Okay. Uh, then notice that uh, once you get this integral P d V, I am writing in terms of specific volume because the equation of state is in terms of specific volume. 1 to 2 for a Van der Waals gas. will be solve the Van der Waals equation for T. You have R T by V minus B minus A by V squared. D V from 1 to 2 and if you integrate this, uh, now remember that ours is an isothermal process. Right, isothermally at something. So, Van der Waals gas isothermal process. So, we consider T to be constant. So, this R T both come out of the uh, uh, equation, out of the integration. So, the first term will give you R T logarithm of V minus B. So, this is R T logarithm of V 2 minus B divided by v 1 minus b. The second one is minus a by v squared, a is a constant. So, minus d v by v, the integration will be, uh, I forgot t, uh, the integration will be uh, a by v. So, plus a into 1 minus 1 over v 2 minus 1 over v 1. So, once you determine our A and B from uh, our approximate Van der Waals model, you just put it into this equation, substitute the value of R and T for steam and the initial and final specific volumes which occur here and here and you get your equation. This is work done per 1 kg, if the mass is different from 1 kg, multiply this by mass per kg that is what is asked in 2.10. So, it is uh, specific work. So, you can what you integrate out or get from this expression itself is the uh, work interaction. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Are you okay, Somaya? I cannot see anything except a sandstorm. Over to you. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, regarding the same problems, uh, F 210 and 29, the uh, pertaining to the previous question, F 210 and F 29, sir, uh, in this uh, the uh, for uh, uh, for the uh, ideal gas as well as for the uh, 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 the Van der Waals gas, the uh, uh, expression for the work done, they are coming out as same whereas they differ if we follow the trapezoidal rule for, for integration, they differ by a large amount, uh, they do not match whereas if we apply the, see this is our Van der Waals equation and uh, if we apply the ideal gas equation also, the uh, isothermal work of compression is in close agreeance whereas by trapezoidal rule there is a large deviation. This is one query, why is it, uh, why, uh, is it right, If am I right? I am doubtful, so I am asking the doubt, am I right? If so, uh, why is it so? Uh, can you please explain? And sir, pertaining to problem F 2.9, the previous problem, where uh, for water, water uh, you have commented in the, that lecture that water does not behave as a good wonder wall fluid or, so uh, we, if we have PCVC upon RTC equal to 3 by 8, 
that we have to prove. But if you put for uh, the critical values of water, it comes out to be much less than 3 by 8. So, uh, for the conclusion from F 2.9 is that wa water is not a good wonder wall substance, whereas the uh, conclusion of uh, uh, problem F 2.10 shows that it is uh, having uh, good uh, uh, agreeance for isothermal work. So, can you please comment on it, sir? Your question is, uh, you uh, uh, I do not have the detailed solution with me just now, but uh, when you said that if you solve the, if you do the integration by assuming an ideal gas equation of state, uh, you will uh, get uh, a reasonably good match. Uh, that is possible only if you do the following. See, uh, for an ideal gas, mm, integral P d V under isothermal conditions ideal gas would be say 1 to 2 integral 1 to 2 P is R T by V d V. So, this makes it R T ln V 2 by V 1. Okay. Now, remember that the equivalent relations for this are where you replace R t by either P 1 V 1 or P 2 V 2 okay. and you replace V 2 by V 1 by P 1 by P 2, because these are all equivalent relations for an ideal gas. Okay. So, what I suspect is one of these for example, uh, at these conditions it is possible that the uh, expansion or compression of steam is uh, reasonably approximately hyperbolic okay and in that case if you substitute either p1 v1 or p2 v2 here you are likely to get a reasonably good match but if you substitute rt as uh, with r as you know the capital r divided by molecular weight of steam i am not sure you will get that thing equal to either p1 v1 or p2 v2 in fact, P 1 V 1 may not exactly be equal to P 2 V 2, but substituting one of them in this equation may give you a reasonably good match. And uh, something not matching a van der Waals gas uh, even crudely does not mean that accidentally in some zone of the state space work done under isothermal condition will uh, lead to a very great mismatch. Okay. Uh, over to you. So, I think that is over for the day. Uh, we meet again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, first for any questions and then we start the last topic cycle analysis. So, have a nice time for the rest of the day. See you tomorrow morning, over and out for everyone.